Um, I see some people are starting to come in. Um, I've just seen Heather, um, Anne and Phoebe. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can see any reactions. Sorry, I've got a bit of an echo. I just need to sort that out. Um, taking that down. Um, Okay, Phoebe, I've just um, I've just seen you again. Okay, I've just um, taken the um, sound down and um, Beth, Patty. Looks like a few people are coming in. Um, I'm trying to look at uh, the comments on my iPad. Um, I'm not sure if I'm getting it right. Okay, um, Phoebe. And okay, hang on, they're coming in now. Um, Heather, Maria, and Beth, um, Patty, Anna. Be nice to see if people could share um, where they're from. It'd be lovely to see where um, everyone's watching from. Um, I'm um, in South Africa, in Durban. Um, I'm just going to wait a few minutes um, and hopefully a few more people. Looks like we've got 11 people at the moment. A few more people will pop in. Um, what I've done is um, this is a piece that I did as a little sample. And, um, oh, my goodness, someone racing in, a, in our street outside. Um, I did this as a little sample and um, this is the type of thing I um, want to to start, well, that is the aim for tonight. Um, Phoebe Northern, um, USA, um, the UK, Colorado. Um, wow, uh, originally from Moscow, Russia. Anna, Mandy, nice. Um, I'm glad you joined us tonight. Estelle, lovely to see you as well. Um, Mandy and Estelle also from Durban. Um, Beth from Texas. Fantastic. Okay, I'll give it a few more minutes and then I'll get going. Um, just to show you some equipment while you're waiting, um, I am using um, the Windsor & Newton gouache, but any gouache will do. Um, so it doesn't have to be an, an expensive brand. It can be an inexpensive brand. Um, I also have this beautiful set of um, Hemi gouache. Um, that's also quite acceptable, um, but any student brand will be fine. In fact, for this technique, it would be best not to use an expensive brand. I would um, try and find an inexpensive tube of gouache. I'm just checking the comments again. Um, Ohio, Washington, Port Townsend, Washington, um, and Thomas from Chicago. Um, lovely. Um, okay, it's eight o'clock. I think I'm going to um, get going. Um, can everyone see everything clearly? Um, it looks okay on my iPad. Um, so I assume it's all good. Um, and I'll keep stopping and checking for the, um, the comments. Okay, so this is what I'm aiming for um, tonight. And what I did is I did a drawing. So I gridded up um, the reference that I've already provided you with, and um, and then I, I drew it quite carefully just using pencil. Then I traced that onto a bit of tracing paper and I've transferred it onto um, a piece of paper here. I've already done a, a few, um, all the different stages, so I've pre-prepped that just to save some time. But um, I'll demonstrate how to apply the, the gouache. So basically, you just need a little palette. You need your um, gouache. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of color in this. So even if your gouache is colored, it shouldn't have too much effect on the artwork. So I'm just going to put a little bit of um, that pink in there. Um, I'm just going to leave it pink. 
for um, this piece that I've um, already prepared, I mixed up more of a peachy color. I used a little bit of this ochre, but it doesn't matter what color you use because most of it washes away. Um, I'm just checking, are there any questions? Okay, all, all is perfect, it looks good. Linda said, okay. And Maria from Spain, fantastic. Um, uh, uh, unfortunately, um, is it Lan? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name properly. This technique actually does need gouache, and you'll see um, just now. And if you get a student brand, it's relatively um, it's relatively inexpensive. Okay, um, Molly, hi, um, Lisa uh, from North Carolina. So maybe, um, Lan, you can um, just watch tonight, and if you are inspired, you can get your own gouache. So I'm just gonna pick up a fairly um, big brush and I'm just gonna mix some color into that. What I would normally do is I would paint in white gouache. I wouldn't paint in a color, but I'm using this color so that you can see it. Otherwise, um, you won't see what I'm doing. So I use a fairly big brush and just put it on quite smoothly. So what I'm doing is I'm avoiding the outlines. So wherever I want white in this artwork, and most of it is going to be um, white, I'm um, going to paint this pink color on, but just keep in mind, I would normally be working with white gouache, but I'm doing this tonight so that you can see. So what I do is I just carefully paint, okay, obviously big areas with a big brush, and then for smaller areas, I'm gonna go into the the smaller brush. Okay, I'm not gonna paint the whole thing, but I'll just show you how I do it, a small area. So I'm just putting my brush down and so for example, the eye, um, I'm going to paint the inside of that eye. I would paint around the eye very carefully. Um, just one tip, try and paint as close to that pencil line as possible. Um, you want your lines to be quite thin without painting over the lines, if that makes any sense. I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush because I'm not getting the detail. And so this would be the white of the eye as well with a little bit of a shine. And then I'm gonna paint where the iris would normally be. Okay, because I think I'd rather color that in by hand. And so I carry on. I paint everything that I want to be white in this artwork. Okay, so I'm going to just check um, comments again. Um, tried gouache for the first time. It's really forgiving, much easier than watercolor. Yes, it is. And it can be um, watered down um, so that it behaves like watercolor. Um, I never used gouache for years and years and years because I, um, I couldn't work out what the purpose of it, of it was. I thought, why use gouache when you can use acrylic? But um, the nice thing about gouache is that it is um, water soluble. So, um, Oh, hang on, I've just lost something here. I'm doing weird things. Okay, um, and then Lan said, um, is the paper treated first? No, it's, so this is just a sheet of, um, this is hot press paper. Um, it um, is not treated at all. Yeah, you just paint direct onto the paper. I'm just checking comments again. And Jan, I've just seen Jan Leatherlands come in and yeah, fantastic to have you here as well. Okay, so once you um, paint everything white, remember I'm using pink because you won't be able to see me painting white. Um, so I would normally finish it like this. So if you have a look at this piece, you'll see that what I've done is I've painted everywhere where I want white on the, on the reference. So if you look back at the reference, you'll see that it's got this, this girl's got this um, checkered scarf on and her hair is quite dark the eyebrows are obviously going to be dark and i've tried to avoid the the pencil mark the nostrils going to be dark you'll see that there's a few outlines 
Okay, so from this stage, what you're going to do is you're going to take, um, I'm going to take a bit of newspaper, and you're going to end up with something like this. You're going to cover your um, artwork completely in black ink. So the ink that we are going to use is an acrylic drawing ink. And this acrylic drawing ink needs to be waterproof. So I'm going to put it into a deep well palette. Okay, a fair amount. I'm going to get a big brush. So um, I like quite a soft brush. And what I'm going to do, and this is going to be a little bit shocking, I'm going to take that ink and I'm just going to spread it across the whole artwork and completely obliterate it. Try to make your um, strokes across. Don't go back and forth or up and down and scrub at it. Just one stroke that runs across that artwork. And you completely cover your um, drawing and the gouache that you've put down. There's a little bit of water in this brush, so what it's doing is, um, I don't know if you can see on camera, um, it's it's coming up a little bit grey, which is fine, I don't mind that. Um, and so what I would normally do is I would leave this to dry completely and then I would immerse it into um, into water. So I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to put the ink aside and I'm going to check for questions again. Um, let me just check. Um, Okay, um, Barbara, I see you've just joined us. Welcome. Um, no, no, no problems. Um, this video should be recorded and um, it will be shared in our group so you'll be able to see it. Um, Denise, um, welcome. Annette, um, watching. Um, yeah, fantastic to see everyone here. So the next step is to, like I said, to let that dry. And then once it's completely dry, I'm just moving... Um, the bits and pieces. So uh, you need to get a, a container of water or it's sloshing everywhere. And I've already created this piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to immerse it into the, the water. And this is where the magic of gouache wash away comes in. So putting it into the water and I'm just lightly rubbing with my fingers. Okay. And rubbing very gently. And you should be able to see the face emerging. Sorry, the water is very cloudy. I should actually change it. I'm just going to keep scrubbing. And then hopefully, once. Um, so basically all you're doing is you are removing very gently, you are removing the gouache from the surface of the paper and the waterproof ink is retaining the drawing. This one looks like it's working out better than my previous ones. Okay, and I just hope everyone can see what I'm doing. Bit of a weird technique too. I would normally put this in a basin. I wouldn't um, obviously do this in a Tupperware container. Um, And then you've just got to be careful that you're quite gentle and you, that you're just attacking that gouache. You're not rubbing into the... Um, into the paper, making it fluffy. So the idea is to, to get off as much gouache as possible without spreading that ink, and it shouldn't. 
You can think that's it. Okay, so that is what the piece looks like. Oh, it looks like I, oh, there's, see, the, I didn't rub there with my fingers, so I'm just gonna pop that in again for two seconds. Okay, and that's what the piece looks like when it's finished. Um, oh, it looks like some of this might still come off. You could actually carry on rubbing, but I'm just worried that I'm gonna make this piece dirty. Um, I might just leave it at that and then let it dry thoroughly and, um, and draw into it. Okay, I'm just checking um, for questions. Um, yes, so Lisa's just said, um, yeah. <laughs> um, hang on, I'm just checking the questions again. Okay. Um, Ruth said, what did you just put over the painting? Um, so what I did is, um, I'll just recap quickly. Um, I pencil drawing, then gouache, um, cover the whole white, all the white areas with gouache. Then what you do is you put acrylic black ink over the whole painting. This is probably dry enough. I could probably shove this one in the water, but I think you've seen enough of that. Um, so that's the acrylic drawing ink and, um, and you let that dry thoroughly and then you just put it into ordinary water and you rub and then the gouache lifts off and you end up um, with an image that looks almost like it's been carved. It almost looks a bit like a lino cut or a wood cut, which is quite, um, quite nice. So I'm going to put this down and just check the... <laughs> Is the water cold? Um, okay, I'm just reading the comments. Um, yeah, Lion said black ink used for the drawing must be waterproof. Yes, it must be. Um, so the gouache is water soluble and the black ink um, basically sticks to the areas where the gouache isn't, if that makes any strange sense. And, um, and, and that's how you get this wash away technique. Barbara, um, it is an incredible technique. Um, I haven't really tried it with portraits before. It works beautifully if you are painting animals or um, plants. Just because of the detail, it's quite difficult to, to get a portrait um, to look amazing. But like I'm going to, I'm going to draw into it. Um, Lisa, yes, I would do it in a sink with running water. I would never normally do it in a Tupperware container. Um, Yes, uh, Lan, so what happens is where the gouache is and the ink is sitting on top of that gouache, that's where the, um, the ink is removed. Um, is the water cold? Barbara, we are going into summer. Um, <laughs> no, so it's not cold. Okay, and I've just read, not warm or hot, I meant. Um, it's just straight out of the tap, so it's, it's cool water. Um, I don't think you need warm water, just straight out of your, your tap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this and I'm going to move my um, tub of water and I'm going to show you what I did earlier. So this is the piece once it's been worked up and each one um, comes up quite differently. Um, this is a piece that I'm going to um, work onto. So the, it has got some flaws and it's probably not as nice. So if I pull this one up again. Um, so you can see as I um, worked, I think I ended up with, with different versions of this um, person, which is actually quite fun. Um, and it is a very unpredictable technique, but you've got to be prepared to, to go with that. Um, You've just got to let go and, um, and let things happen. And I think that's the, the beauty of this technique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw into this one and I'm using the, um, the reference. Uh, the reference is actually on, um, on Facebook if you want to look at it. Um, but what I might do is I might put 
this artwork next to it so that you can sort of see what I'm doing. I'm aiming for something like that. Okay, so the first thing is to start drawing a little bit of, of white into her face. And there's various things you can, you can use. I love this um, acrylic ink. It's very much like um, gouache, except it's a little bit thinner. You could paint with acrylic or you could paint with gouache as well. Um, what I also use is these um, paint markers. These are acrylic paint markers, and those are lovely for, for adding whites into to artworks. So I think what I'm going to do is just maybe start fixing up the side of her face um, and maybe working into the nose and just adding more, more values, more tonal values. Okay, so um, I've also got this jelly roll that's wonderful for um, white media. Um, I'm just going to check uh, the comments again. Oh, Leanne, I'm, uh, I've just seen your, your message. I'm glad you love it. Uh, Renane, um, nice to see you here. Um, okay, so um, to start drawing into this, so uh, okay, let me just um, scribble that. I think this pen's gone a bit dry. I'll just grab another one. Actually, I'm going to scribble on the back here and just get it going. Um, so this face, um, is a it's come out a little bit too narrow with this um, technique. So I'm going to widen it. Um, this part of your face is a bit weird. So you can work into it there. The lip lines are a little bit too thick. I love some of these random marks. Oh, I've just smudged it a bit there. Um, but I do love these random marks and I like all these odd things that are going on in the um the face so i think as you you work in into these pieces you can make decisions as you as you go okay and i think already that nose is looking a little bit better she's not looking as weird as when i first started out And I think her lips are a little bit wider, so I might just draw into that. It's quite difficult to talk and um, draw at the same time, but I am going to try my best. So at the moment I'm just fixing lines making them a little bit more refined. Quite like her thick eyebrows, so I'm not sure if I'm going to touch them too much. Chin is perhaps a little bit thick, this line, so I could refine it. I might work into her. She's got like a little, a little jersey or a, a cardigan on. Just adding some outlines in. In some of the pieces I did, I, I actually painted an outline and I didn't leave it um, just going into the, the negative space.
you'll see that some of these little blocks are a little bit rough. Um, when I painted it in, in this one that I washed away, I was a little bit more careful. So um, you can see that they, um, oh, they're not much better, but they're, um, it's, it's quite interesting though, that each time you work on these, they, each one will come out a little bit different. Um, I'm just checking. Um, Linda, yes, it is fun. Uh, okay, I'm just looking at comments. I'm doing something very um, completely different for my um, lesson when I, I my pre-recorded lesson on um, let's let's face it 2022. Um, it's not going to be anything like this. I was worried that people would would become bored and um, you know you don't want to show people too much of the same thing. So I thought that I would really do something different and um, I remembered I had learned this as a teenager in um, in high school, my art teacher taught me this technique, but not with a face. And um, yeah, it was just such a magical technique. And I thought, well, it might be quite nice to show everyone. So I'm using a um, something that's, it's a, a local brand, um, Copic Marker. It's just a little bit, um, it's not as expensive as Copic Markers. And it's a very pale, um, it says cool gray number one. And I'm just adding the values into her um, face. And you don't need markers. You could use um, ink or you could use gouache and add a little bit of, of black into that gouache and make a nice pale gray and paint into it. And I think you'll find that a lot of the Let's Face It course is like this. And um, don't stress about buying a lot of equipment. Um, I would often, or may maybe, I don't know, I mean, I would watch the videos and then, um, and then substitute it with a lot of the equipment with equipment that you have at home. Um, and then... I mean, obviously this technique needs squash, so I mean, then you have to buy that. But um, white gouache is fantastic for, um, for covering all sorts of things. You could use it for mistakes in watercolor um, and then paint into it again. So it, it really is a, it, it's a worthwhile medium, even if you just get one tube to have in your, your little kit. Um, I'm gonna start coloring in those eyes. Um, Okay, I'm just checking again. Uh, Judy, um, hi Judy. Um, Judy said on the Pacific coast of Jalisco, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, I'm not sure Mexico, fantastic. What a cool method to get started with a piece. Yes, it is. I, um, I enjoy it because it's very bold. Um, it makes a statement immediately and then you can add all the little subtle bits into it. Um, Linda, it's a pleasure. I see that you say um, thanks for sharing this. Phoebe, instead of black acrylic ink, would other mediums work? Black India ink, yes, black India ink will work. Um, regular black acrylic paint. I'm not sure. Um, I'm just worried about the acrylic paint because I think that the acrylic paint might adhere to the gouache. Um, so, but maybe if you if you just test it on a, a, a piece of paper. Um, who knows, it might actually work. So um, Phoebe, I'm not sure if I'm asking, answering your, your questions, but um, you know, it was, you might actually discover something new and, and be able to teach the rest of us. So I would, I would play with, with everything. I would test the gouache with, um, with the acrylic paint and see if anything happens. Um, the weight of the paper is, um, this is 300 grams. So it is quite um, quite heavy. Um, I, it does um, buckle a little bit. Um, I don't know if you can see on this one, it is buckling. But then I just put it under a whole lot of big books and um, I, let it, I let it dry flat. Um, 
I'm just checking again. Um, no, um, white gesso is not the same as gouache. Um, gesso is um, not water soluble when it's um, dry. Gouache is water soluble. So you want something that's going to lift off the surface. Um, is it uh, Tove? Uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm butchering people's names. And has just asked, can you use tempera? I don't know much about the qualities of tempera. Um, but again, like I said to Phoebe, you could always test tempera, put down um, a bit of tempera, put ink over it, and then wash it and see what happens. Um, in the previous one, did you make her hair strokes finer than this one with the gouache or when painting into it afterwards? Um, so what I did is, um, I think I painted into it afterwards. You'll see that what I've done, so this was the second one I've done, and then this one here, um, I decided that I didn't like the white strokes that I was putting into this one, so I just decided to make the hair black. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, draw white into that. Um, so as I went on in the afternoon, um, I just seemed to refine the, the image a little bit more. So, um, yeah, and I think that's just experience. It's that I'm not very experienced in this technique. So I hope that as I work with it, I, um, the work will actually become stronger, better. Um, I mean, this little one, you'll see that the, um, the little hair strokes of, um, I even used, um, I used a, a colored pencil. I used a white um, Derwent drawing pencil and I worked some soft marks into the background. Um, I used the, the jelly roll and I used the white ink. So the white ink that I showed you earlier, this white ink, this acrylic ink, um, I um, painted into. I think there is an opaque um, a ink that is produced by, um, I'm going blank, but I'll put it into comments. Um, but I mean, whatever um, opaque, I think, oh, you know, it'll, it'll come to me. Okay, so I'll, I'm just going to check a few more comments. In the previous one, did you... Okay. Um, Lisa, okay, thanks, got it. Okay, Lisa, okay. I see you answering the... the my, you're just responding to the previous question that you asked. Okay, so I'm going to carry on drawing into this. Um, I love these um, Faber-Castell grey pens, and they're a little bit finer than... Um, and so what you can do is you can color into the, the eyes and just start adding more grays. I don't like the curve of that nose, so I think I am going to alter that as well. And I shouldn't be saying colour in, I should be saying add shading or value. And the hair, what I would do, or what I did in this piece, I um, worked quite a lot of dark over it. And then I drew into it again. So I took one of these markers and just So drew a lot more value in her face. I think I may have used a darker marker. Um, let me 
just see what I've got. I'm just going to test it at the side of her first. Oh, this one's quite light as well. But it will build up. You could also work into this with um, charcoal or pencil or um, colored pencils, like a black pencil. You could work color into these um, gouache wash aways. So um, the possibilities are endless. And if your paper is good quality paper, then it will be able to to take whatever media you are using. I'm gonna color in the white of her eyes and then work into that again. That's a mistake that a lot of us make is um, we assume that the white of eyes are actually white and they're not. They, um, they often appear dark and then it's just the little flickers of light that, that will appear, appear white. Um, this chin's a bit of a weird shape so I'm going to use this paint marker and just this paint marker is quite transparent. I'm just going to move this along a bit. I think this is uh, actually, a, it's not, when I'm looking at the reference, it's not too bad, this, um, the curve of this, this scarf. It did also neaten up the edges of these little triangles on her scarf, the diamond shapes. I'm just going to check again. Oh, Dr. Martins makes a white ink. Addie, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, oh, and it looks like a whole lot of people are, um, are writing um, about opaque ink. just heard my cat Fergal squeak at the door so I hope he's not winding it winding up he's been good so far normally he won't allow me in my room by myself gets upset when we we close doors in the house and he doesn't get access I've recently been working with these. Um, this is these are kitties markers, and um, these are water soluble, so they um, they're fun things to use. I think that line on the top of her lip is a little bit dark. I think 
Maybe I need to refine those eyeballs. They're a bit weird looking. So maybe I should draw into that. I'm just going to check the um, I probably won't finish this piece um, on camera but I think I've given you enough um, and my cat's squealing um, sorry enough of an idea of how to work up this artwork. I'll just work some, um, actually I think I'm, I'm going to show you how the white ink works. If anyone from Durban is um, watching, this ink is available from um, Bastion Paint. Um, I think it's in um, Belito in Durban, so um, it really is a wonderful, um, wonderful product. And I promise I'm not getting any kickback from them. I just discovered it and it's, um, it really is beautiful paint. or ink at least. There is a pinkish tinge on this um, face from the, the pink gua sha I, I used, which you wouldn't normally get if you were working with, with just the white gouache. And it might just be a little bit difficult to see on camera. And you can see already the face is starting to look quite different. I think I need to widen her face on the side here. Um, maybe put in a, some white marks down her neck. Maybe with a slightly thicker brush. And I do apologize 
about the cat sounds. going to check the comments again. Um, oh, um, Molly, Molly is asking what brand are the water soluble markers? Um, these are called Giotto, um, but they really are um, they're from the supermarket that all the kids buy. And you'll probably find that, um, that they, um, okay, let me just show you. Um, I'll put a mark in here um, and I'll put some water on it. So when we went into lockdown, I, um, I was trying to find equipment for my um, high school students to use at home. And most of them have these really cheap markers and um, we discovered that we could we could almost do watercolor paintings with them so they do soften and they go blurry let me um i don't want to get up um And go and fetch more and um, but you know you they really are you'll probably find that most kitties markers are um water soluble just trying to show you uh make some dark bold marks and see if i can water it down i think these are already starting to soften around the the face. Yeah, it does look like they um, they are softening. Okay, that still had a bit of white on it. Oh, I'll be starting to try and kick down the door now. Um, okay, I'm just going to check the... Uh... Barbara, I think, um, I've just said you've seen, you've said thank you, Joan, for sharing this process. So fun, I think I'll try a postcard. Yes, I would try um, on a small scale first. Um, Kathy, Kath, Raymond, um, thank you for joining us. Uh, Lan, um, Lan says, this has been a wonderful introduction to a whole new technique. Thank you. I'm, um, yeah, delighted that you, you find it useful. Um, Mandy, um, Mandy, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm very pleased that you, um, You've enjoyed it. Uh, Mandy says, an altogether fabulous technique, great easy instruction style, beautiful demonstration, really looking forward to experimenting. Yay, Mandy. Um, Ray, welcome. Um, Molly says, love that those are just cheap children's markers. I had no idea that they could blend like that. Um, Molly, if you uh, find my um, Instagram, um, my Instagram is um, Joan Martin underscore artist. Um, you'll see that I've done some drawings of birds with these really cheap, inexpensive markers and all different colors and then just work water into them. Um, Deb, welcome. 
Um, you want to see the kitty. Um, Molly, um, I'm terrified to turn my camera because I'm, if I turn it, I'm, I, I, I don't think I'm going to get it back. So, um, okay. Um, Mandy says she can't really hear. Fergal, Fergal's my cat. Uh, he's really beating the door down right now. Um, Joe, welcome. Uh, Maria says, thank you. Estelle, I'm glad you enjoyed the technique. Um, Deb says she's looking forward to trying this. Um, so one of the things I do is because it is a bit gray, um, this, the background, I often take a big thick black marker. Uh, let's see if I can find it amongst all the chaos that is occurring on my desk now. And I do work around the edges of this just to separate the head a little bit from that background, but that's a personal um, preference. So I would go and put in a, um, just to separate that face slightly. I would normally work into areas like that, keep working the face up until I'm happy with it. Um, that hair I'd work marks into it hatch over it and just keep working until I get the effect that I, I like and you really don't need expensive markers you can work with with the kitties markers and they're perfectly fine I think I'm just very lazy. I like these big chunky markers because I can cover areas quite quickly with them. I might go in with this Chinese white oh, and that makes quite a soft subtle mark so just experiment and and play and haul out all your white and black art materials that you've got and, and work into these these drawings Okay, I'm going to do a quick check again. Um, uh, Molly said, you, uh, Molly's saying, just saw the bird paintings on my Instagram. Those are delightful. Um, Molly, I'm taking part in, well, I'm hoping to, to do um, a bird a, a day. Um, Charlotte Hamilton is running it. Um, she's, she's got all the prompts on her Instagram. And um, yeah, so if you um, if you put a hashtag in and you look for, I think it's um, birds in December, um, you'll be able to um, to join in. And it's yeah, it's a love. She she puts all the prompts together, and um, you basically just do a um, a bird a day. And I'm trying to keep it very low key. I don't want to put too much detail into them. I want to keep them loose so that I can manage to draw um, at least once a day. Um, Christina, um, Christina says, thank you, this is interesting. I like to learn um, always something new. Um, Christina, it's a, an absolute pleasure. Um, guys, I think I'm going to um, call it a day and um, stop demonstrating. 
and um, I hope you have found it um, interesting and um, I hope that I've given you something else that you can explore and play and experiment. Um, like I say, I'd normally work into this more and work it up as much as as this piece. Um, I'll just check if there's any more questions. Okay, it looks like that's it. So have a good day. Um, I know people are... Um, Phoebe says thank you. Um, Molly says thanks, Joan. I love your class and your work. Thank you very much, both Phoebe and Molly. Um, Hopefully you'll enjoy my lessons in um, Let's Face It 2022. Um, Carla, it's perfectly fine. Um, the recording should actually come up fairly soon. Um, Addie says, thank you, Mandy. Yes, see you on Friday. Yeah, of course, Mandy. Um, uh, Ma Maya, sorry, um, I'm bad with pronouncing names. Um, she says, thank you. Jan says, thank you so much, Joan. What a great session. Bye, everyone. Um, Estelle says, thanks, Joan. Um, Beth, thank you. Barbara, looking forward to your lessons in 22. Um, yeah, um, that's fantastic to hear. Um, Judy, thank you and look forward to your class in, let's face it, 2022. Okay, guys, I'm going to um, switch off my camera now and have a fantastic day for people where it's still daytime and um, for everyone else where it's night. Have a fantastic evening and I'll see you in class.